Uh, I'm Zach, um, and I'm from a company called Upverter. Um, and I want to start my talk by being a little bit contrarian. Um, I think there's a serious problem with innovation in the developed part of the world. And, uh, and here's how I know. Um, first, our economy has never been as good as it was post-World War II. We were growing at 3% year over year. By the time we hit the 70s, it was 2% year over year, 1% by the time we hit um, the 2000s, and, and, and there's, there's no, no trend that says that this is going to get better. Technology is the way that we grow the economy when we can't add more people or more stuff, and we're not doing our job. Second, we move slower than we ever have since 1960. Highway travel is slower nowadays than it was 40 years ago. Airplane travel is slower. We don't go supersonic. We don't go to the moon. Third, we've stopped getting older. Um, 100 years ago, the lifespan was growing three times as fast as it is today. And lastly, 80% of parents believe that their children's generation will be worse off than they are. Economist Tyler Cohen calls it the great stagnation. And if that all is not grim enough, I think it's going to get worse. Um, we still have to handle the retirement of the baby boomers and an education system which is continuing to decline. But this isn't where we were supposed to be. Forty years ago, it was commonly believed that the standard of living would have already doubled by now, that we would virtually have eliminated bacteria and viruses, that we'd have cured cancer, that 100% of cars would be electric, that we'd have space colonies and interplanetary travel, that we'd have translating telephones, and, and Dale wouldn't have had to use an earpiece at, at you know, Maker, Maker Faire Rome. We'd have reliable speech to text. We, you know, we were supposed to have cured cancer, the common cold, and lived to be at least 100. So what happened? Most of the doomsayers seem to think that the world has run out of ideas. We did the easy stuff. Sanitation that improved our lifespans better than drugs or pharmacy or, or anything else we'll ever be able to come up with. It was really easy to tap Niagara Falls for power. It's really, really hard to do better nuclear. Antibiotics were the result of messy lab work. Gene, the gene uh, uh, was terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of crunching for 10 years to figure out our genotype. But I have kind of a different theory. I think that there are three things that are really, really holding us back. At the highest level, I think society is getting in the way of innovation. I think between government regulation, a lack of funding, increased costs of energy, we've made it systematically harder to do things with atoms. We ran out of enemies. We kind of adopted this culture of the world's going to get better and that's not my job. We stopped encouraging our children to become scientists and engineers and we gave up our manufacturing sector. But I think engineering culture is also pretty broken, and Massimo talked a little bit about this. We hide our innovations. We don't share or collaborate or reuse or build on top of what other people have done. Standards. We do our best work in college or at home. We use the same tools and ideologies that we did a decade ago, and that's a good thing. Terrified of China and India stealing our jobs while all the while we make it harder to be an engineer in America. But maybe worst of all, we're handicapping the few engineers and scientists that we do have by giving them the tools that we do. Legacy tools, 
tools that had most of their innovation done in the 80s. But I believe if we're able to fix these problems, we can return to a period of growth. I, I don't think we're destined to no longer be innovators. My vision is a society that wants engineers and scientists as badly as it needs them. A world where engineers work in harmony, sharing and collaborating, and reusing their work. A world where startups can build devices for healthcare as easily as they can build photo sharing apps. A world of free and available education, tools, hardware compilation, and product distribution. That's my vision, and I think we can get there. And it's already started to happen. In February, Upverter hosted a hackathon with Y Combinator in Mountain View. We had over 300 applications in the two weeks leading up to the hackathon. We could only let in 150 people who all showed up. They hacked for eight hours, came up with 40 new products. They did stuff in eight hours that companies have been trying to do for years. They built haptic devices that Stanford has been working on since the 90s. They built Google Glass. What else did they do? They built a circuit board printer. They built, um, they built a, a, a baby rocking carriage that was mobile controlled. Um, it, was, it was an amazing, amazing event. Um, we, had, we, had retired, we, we had retired NASA engineers and children. And they all worked together, and they all collaborated, and they built some really, really incredible stuff, um, a couple of which have gone on to become startups. So let me tell you a little bit about Upverter. We started the company three years ago. Um, we launched our first product about a year ago into the market. And when we set out, it was to solve this problem of innovation, as much of it as we could. Our goal was to make it easier for people to build things. And we can't really fix the, so, the social problem. That's, that's really outside of our control. But we can enable engineers to do a better job sharing. We can enable engineers to do a better job reusing and working together. And we can try to build better tools. And so in the three years that we've been working on Upverter, we've built um, a community, a vibrant community of people sharing parts and schematics and reference designs and layouts, all in their web browser, all from different parts of the world. For a little while, China was our largest com country in the world. For a little while, India was our largest country in the world. Nowadays, it's the US. But we have thousands and thousands of engineers all over the world working together to engineer new products. And I think it's going to get better. And I think if we all work together, it's, it's going to get better. And we're going to solve this innovation problem. Thanks.